Ahoy there, music lovers. Hey, Chris Hess here coming to you from Lexington, Massachusetts. Welcome back to my video series on how to make your first virtual choir. Uh, this is chapter five, I believe. In this video, we're going to quickly review our project plan, and then we're going to jump in and get started with your guide tracks. This is a fairly uh, information-dense chapter. A dense chapter, because we're all dense. Who f okay, so let's refine our plan a little bit. Uh, presumably, at this point, you've picked a song to sing, and you took my advice from chapter three, and it's a nice and simple song that your group knows super well. Step one, complete. Check. Let's call step two of the plan setup. The two deliverables for step two are A, a packet of information that you'll provide to each singer, and B, identifying and enlisting whoever is going to be your tech lead for the project, which might be you. In step three, your singers will record their parts and send you the files. In step four, you'll get organized for your edit. In step five, the final step, you'll produce your virtual choir video and you will do your epic victory dance. For now, let's go back to step two. Let's talk about guide tracks. Guide tracks are recordings that you make that your singers listen to or watch while they record their parts. Guide tracks serve two basic purposes. They keep everyone in time and they keep everyone on pitch. In the spirit of full disclosure, I suppose I should say that guide tracks help keep everyone on time and on pitch, as you will likely learn when you start getting files back from your singers, even with a guide track to sing to, some people will be more in time and more on pitch than others. This is not a serious problem, especially if you have a lot of singers. In an in-person choir, timing and pitch can be fixed to some degree with practice. In a virtual choir, it can often be fixed to an even greater degree and sometimes entirely in post-production with software. You might be at this point asking whether guide tracks also help with dynamics. The short answer is that they can help with dynamics, but in our scenario, where singers are recording themselves on their phones in makeshift home studios with little or no sound dampening, we want to be careful. I don't think it makes sense to ask your singers to record anything in a true pianissimo, for example. As their volume falls relative to the ambient noise wherever they're recording, the usefulness of their recording as a sound source for your project will also fall. I've had situations where singers sang so softly that in order to get rid of the sound of their air conditioner, I had to step on their recording so hard in post that it sounded like they were underwater. On the other hand, if their recordings clip when they sing triple forte, it will be useless to you, at least for that segment of the recording. Regardless of what your score says, I would try to keep your singers between mezzo piano and forte and add more extreme dynamics in the post-processing phase. Good guide tracks range from very simple to very complicated. What you'll need will depend on your song and your group. Tuning in general won't be difficult as long as your guide track is in tune. Timing can be more complicated. The best way I've come up with to help your singers is this. You gotta climb into your singers' heads and read through their parts. What would you need to see and hear on the guide track to get your entrances and exits right in your recording of their parts? Literally sing through the singer's parts if you have to. Be realistic about your expectations. Just because you're a great sight reader with excellent relative pitch and timing doesn't mean all your singers are as well. If some of your singers struggle with their recordings, you can bet that they're going to look to you for help. And if you can support them more from the beginning in the guide track, you might be able to save yourself and them some effort down the road. And that's a good thing. Having said that, make your guide tracks as complicated as they need to be but no more complicated than that. If your song is basically one steady tempo with a soloist and the choir singing doo-wops in the choruses, all you probably need in your guide track is your soloist on an audio recording. Throw in a metronome if you're feeling generous. Conversely, if you have multiple vocal parts coming in and out with lots of counting required, numerous dynamics and key changes, you're going to need more than that simple track, especially if your singers aren't super familiar with the piece. In addition to a metronome, also known as a click track, you might add vocal section leaders, 
soloist vocals. You might add text prompts for dynamics. You might add video of your conductor. You might add your score scrolling down the page. One important question you need to figure out uh, is whether you can get away with a single guide track or if you need to make tracks by parts. Rather than give you detailed instructions for making guide tracks, I'm just going to put links in the description to a couple example tracks I've made, one simple and one complicated. Feel free to pick and choose and borrow stuff from those in any way you think makes sense. Okay, now let's talk about distribution. I put my guide tracks on YouTube. That makes them easy to move around, playable on every platform. Most people are familiar with the interface and it's free. If you think you have a better way to move your guide tracks around and get them to your singers, please go for it. YouTube works well for me. All right, now you have your guide tracks. It's time to put together the rest of the information packet for your singers, which is really just an email with a bunch of links and attachments. The pieces you'll need, in addition to the links to your guide tracks, are instructions for recording and sending in files, and the score for your music. If your singers already have the score, don't worry about it, you can skip that. If not, scan it or purchase it in PDF format so that you can include it in the email. Uh, I've linked my recording instructions below. Feel free to borrow or adapt them in any way that's useful to you. What I'm sharing has worked for me on multiple recordings, but if you have ideas about making improvements, please, by all means, go for it. Finally, you wanna put all of that stuff together in an email. If you wanna save some time, I've linked an email template that I use for my singer packets. Just replace the items in brackets with your materials and you'll be all set. Okay, by now you've probably figured out that the packet doesn't have to be an email like it's 1997. If you'd rather post your information to a Facebook group or a Discord server or a blog post or literally any other online venue that can accommodate links and files, I don't know why that wouldn't work. Just make sure you edit the document templates accordingly if you make any changes. Before I end this video, I want to touch on a couple persnickety little technical things that you need to sort out sooner than later, um, information that will go into your packet for your singers uh, or the instruction sheet. The first detail, uh, and it's critical, is the resolution and frame rate of the videos your singers will be recording. You want everyone to shoot with the same settings. As of this moment in 2020 in the United States, I recommend that you ask your singers to shoot their videos at 1080p resolution and 30 frames per second. Uh, there are a bunch of technical reasons for that, which I'll get into in a later video. But for now, please just take my word for it. Uh, you will absolutely save time and heartache if everybody shoots at the same resolution and frame rate. Stress this to your singers. Repeat after me, 1080p, 30 frames per second. Okay, the next thing you need to decide is how your singers are going to get you their recordings. These will be very large files. Depending on their settings, a three minute QuickTime or MP4 movie shot at 108030 might be 300 megabytes of data. Too big for a simple email attachment. Okay, you have a lot of options here, but not all of them will work for everyone. Some people will be able to send you a link in an email. Some people might be able to share it in Dropbox or Google Drive. Some can text you a video or use Facebook Messenger. Some can upload to YouTube. I have tried the just find a way to get it to me approach, and I will tell you from experience that it is a pain in the Don't do it. Um, what I settled on is a two terabyte Dropbox account using Dropbox's file request functionality. It allows me to make a link that I can provide to everyone, which will let them upload to a specific folder in my Dropbox account from any internet connected device. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, last thing. This is really for you. Do yourself a favor. Set a deadline for your singer's file submissions publicize it repeatedly and stick to it. Put the deadline in the subject line of the email you send with your information packet. Uh, if you're not doing email, put it in the title of the post to Facebook or Discord or whatever it is you're using. A lot of the work you need to do can't even start until you have all the singer recordings. If you need to chase people, or wait for them, it's going to put a dent in your timeline. If you get in the habit of slipping your deadlines, subsequent projects will be harder. 
I don't think you should be a dick about it. I try not to be. Um, I like to give my singers at least a week to get their recordings done. But once the window closes, lock it, pull the blinds, and move on to putting your virtual choir project together. That was certainly a beefy chapter. Uh, please make good and liberal use of the example documents I've provided and leave any questions you have in the comments. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about the second step two deliverable, which is finding a tech lead. And if you can't find one who isn't you, becoming the tech lead. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Chris. See you on the other side. Just make sure you edit the document template. You have a lot of options, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, anyhow, let's get going. Um...